One of the main pillars of the mobile gaming community is now ceasing to exist, and I want to talk about it with you all today. Don't forget to leave a like, pop a sub, and comment down below what you think about anything that I mention in the world's most inconsistent podcast, the Minty Mobile Games Podcast, and let's get right into it. All right, guys, it is indeed a dark day. Touch Arcade is shutting its doors, and I'm honestly surprised they made it this long. Now, believe it or not, just to give you guys a bit of backstory on how I feel about all of this, back in the day when I was attending college for my bachelor's degree, I actually was a writer for Touch Arcade. I was super passionate about it. I was super into writing at the time. And I do feel like when I truly try, I am a good writer in general. And I'm even better when it's something that I'm passionate about. And I was definitely passionate about mobile games. This is when, back when I was dabbling in streaming and a little bit in YouTube, like right at the start of everything. And streaming on Mob Crush, shout out, let me know in the comment section down below if you guys know what Mob Crush is. But I was a partnered streamer there, and I was streaming almost daily, having a blast with that. And I really knew that mobile gaming was my niche at this point. And I was a writer for about a year. I rubbed shoulders with uh, Sean, Jared, and Carter. Shout out Carter. He was one of the main reasons I got into this this field, honestly. Um, He really kind of put in a good word for me uh, and everything. I think Eli was one of the heads of Touch Arcade as well at the time. And um, between Eli and Carter and some samples of things I wrote, I was able to kind of get a part-time job with them in a way. And I released quite a few things and I enjoyed my time there. Um, One of the hardest things I think for me personally with Touch Arcade and writing there was giving things a star rating uh, I, I found that with the most popular games that I reviewed, people would really agree with my written review, but not disagree with my star review. And that was always the hardest for me is, is doing the star review. Just a fun little backstory that I wanted to include here as I talk about Touch Arcade. But now Touch Arcade is ceasing to exist. I think they made it happen for as long as possible. Jared said he saw the writing on the wall for a while, but I am I'm still impressed that they made it this this far. Now, why I think they're ceasing to exist, he did mention that they're not taking as many advertisements for kind of like gacha games and like kind of greedy advertisements or more in your face advertisements. And um I, my thoughts on that is like if it keeps the site running, who cares? Uh, I think a lot of people really don't mind, especially nowadays. Uh, You got to evolve with the times. And I know that Touch Arcade really did start trying to evolve with the times um, by including like Steam Deck reviews and Switch reviews and just any mobile gaming device, not just mobile gaming devices. And I think the, the Steam Deck definitely had a lot of potential with covering Steam Deck games and reviewing games on all sorts of platforms. However, they really stuck to written reviews. And nowadays, written reviews truly just don't get the clicks that other reviews do. I I know me personally, even I have uh, graduated, I mean, uh, gravitated towards uh, visual reviews such as videos or maybe a mixture of the both where there's a written review with clips that are talking about certain points. I like those mixtures. Or if you check out Mini Review, I think that's a really good platform. I think that's a platform that's evolving with the times a little bit quicker. Uh, shout out to Nimble Thor because you can see video. There's video reviews linked in there. It has the games linked in there. The reviews are a bit more bite sized and more mobile friendly. Um, and they have their own dedicated app. I think Mini Review is definitely kind of the review site of the future. Um, uh, basically, the, a touch arcade if it would have evolved quicker in my opinion all of these thoughts are just my own i'm just spouting them off in real time i haven't really written down any bullet points for this podcast whatsoever so if i'm not making sense or if some opinions or views seem a little skewed give me some grace and also it's just my opinion let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below but again i think that's why the main reason touch arcade um is shutting down 
or has shut down, depending on when I post this video, is because just written v reviews are not the same anymore. Um, everyone gets their reviews from YouTube at this point, pretty much everybody. And I think the main reason of that being is you get to see the gameplay, you get to see them talk about it in real time, and you know you have more of an idea of what people are talking about. And plus the attention span with like TikTok and short form content and the attention span of just the younger generation in general, me included, honestly, I'm starting to go down that dark path of brain rot. Um, but my uh, attention spans are just shorter than ever and reading a full written review, very few people do that. And it's mostly just the older generation, basically my generation and up, I would say, as a millennial. So I'm not surprised, but it doesn't mean I'm not sad. Touch Arcade was one of the main forums I would find games to review. I would dig through their hot games list, their new games list. Um, I use a, a plethora of different ways to find you guys mobile games and cover mobile games on this channel. But Touch Arcade was definitely one of the pillars that I did uh, did so, um, through which I did so. And, uh, I have a lot of respect. I think they really did pave the way. They're one of the pioneers in the mobile gaming space. I think they were the best doing it, even though they didn't evolve as quickly with the times as they could have. Um, I think they did a phenomenal job. And, um, one, one other thing, because like I said, I don't have bullet points this is a little bit scattered. Um, Touch Arcade did stream on Twitch for a time. They used to stream on Mob Crush. That didn't really go anywhere, and that was due to Mob Crush's fault. Mob Crush definitely had lightning in a bottle for a little bit, and then they just absolutely broke broke that bottle and let it all go to waste. Um, but if they would have continually streamed on Twitch uh, repeatedly and had like a hip or like uh, maybe a younger streamer who could really tap in with the younger audience that usually would tune in. I think they could have had at least something going on the stream uh, eventually and kind of weaving that in with their website overall. I think that was a missed opportunity. And I know it's really hard to grow on Twitch and maybe they just saw it as a sunken cost. But um, yeah, I think they could have taken that other places too. Uh, again, please let me know your guys' thoughts on the comment section down below. But I'm definitely sad about Touch Arcade. It will be missed. I do think that um, it will be harder for me to find games now with one of the main pillars that I look through, uh, not to mention just my own personal skills that I use to find games. But it was really nice to at least just get set in the right direction through Touch Arcade and various other means, but now it's just gone, and it's a piece of history, but I'm very grateful that I was part of it, and I really enjoyed my time uh, writing for Touch Arcade. It really made me a better writer. It was really cool to get to know game developers uh, and make connections and network a little bit, too, and just know the back, back door or behind the scenes of these mobile games that we play uh, on our phones. Like, it's really cool to see the developer side and see it from their perspective and why they make the choices that they do. It really opens up your your eyes a lot. I think a lot of people are still to this day ignorant on how much it takes just to make a mobile game, let alone make a successful mobile game. A lot of people are ignorant to that fact. And I think um, working at Touch Arcade really like quickened my learning process and my maturity when it came to the mobile gaming field. So I'm also grateful for that. But like I, I've mentioned some problems that I think Touch Arcade had and some things that they could have uh, done better. And it's always easier said than done. Hindsight is 2020, of course. And so, but all in all, I hope this doesn't come off as me just saying, this is why they died. They should have done this. Like I, it's just some of my thoughts, but all in all, I think this is a huge loss for the mobile gaming space. And, I, and if any of the Touch Arcade crew is listening to this, I appreciate all the work you guys put in. I think you're the best to do it to date, uh, in my opinion. And um, a lot of other platforms can only hope to have the legacy that you guys have built. Um, but pretty crazy. Um yeah, as far as the future of mobile gaming and reviews and stuff goes, I already touched on it. Mini Review has a lot of um, potential, in my opinion. I see it as like kind of a blend of everything, as everything that anybody could be looking for. So if you like video reviews, they have that. If they if you like written reviews, they have that. If you just want to find a new game to play, they have that, and you don't even have to look through anything. It's just like new releases and stuff. So go show, now that we have a platform dying, 
Um, go show Mini Review some love. I think it has a lot of potential. I hope they stick with it. Uh, I think in time it can be everyone's go-to platform. I also have heard a lot about App Raven, um, and a lot of people like App Raven a lot. I think I'm saying that correctly. Let me check that out real quick, actually. Um, App Raven. I, I've never used it personally myself. This is spoiler right now, but I've had it uh, suggested to me many a time. Yeah, it's App Raven. Um, just finding out uh, when, when, like, you can make a, a wish list of mobile games, which is really useful, honestly. See when they go on sale. You can also leave your own ratings and comments. I know uh, Silent Rocco is a huge reviewer on that from our previous uh, podcast with our friend Gaming in the Moment. So go show other platforms some love. Um, if you never checked out Touch Arcade, do me a favor and at least like look up what you can of Touch Arcade. Check it out. And, and then after that, go give love to Mini Review and App Raven. Those, those uh, platforms will be carrying the mantle, honestly. And um, there's not much else. I mean, there's Pocket Gamer. I think they could do a lot more to evolve as well. Um, but I, those two mainly, go check them out, give them a follow, give them a watch, give them a click, whatever, uh, and you might benefit personally from checking those out too. And as always, I'll still be here at least once a week with a couple suggestions for you, some gameplay, some of my short thoughts, and sometimes just a longer podcast or whatever. So hopefully I can kind of fill the hole that is left by Touch Arcade to some degree. Um, that's always been my goal is to just be another resource for y'all when it comes to finding great mobile games to play and saving time and having to find them and check them out and download them and all of that. I do that process for you. So hopefully I've somehow become not a pillar, but a resource for y'all. And if I am, then it's all worth it in the end. But this will be one of a, this will be kind of a shorter podcast I have a video that will come out shortly after this one, definitely less than a week. Um, some exciting content on the way, definitely a bigger uh, video with some of the most addicting games of the year too, so stay tuned for that. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for listening till the end of this short podcast episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like, pop a sub, all of that jazz. I love you guys. I hope you guys are staying safe and take it easy.